What is going on my Super Saiyan which is Ramsar here and today I will talk about Dragon Ball Z Mars 2 and the brand new changes and features that have been implemented in the sequel. So in case you don't know, which I'm sure a lot of you guys already know by now since I've been posting gameplay, I got a chance to go to Bandai yesterday again and I got the chance to play the Gamescom build of Dragon Ball Z Mars 2 that was available in Germany. Now I do want to point out that this is still an early, early alpha build, so what was present in this demo could very well be greatly different or somewhat different or if not, if not maybe the same when the game comes out in October. So this is not final. This is just based off the game that I got to play yesterday. For example, we actually weren't even allowed to test out the Trio Might stage, which a lot of you guys are already asking me, like, Rhyme Stop, why don't you pick that stage? The reason why I didn't play in the Trio Might stage is because it was unfinished. There were missing textures and everything. So again, everything that we got to experience yesterday is still an early alpha, nothing final. So whatever is present in this build could very well be drastically different when the game comes out in October. But with that said, I noticed a lot of new changes and I want to kind of discuss them to see what you guys think. And hopefully a lot of these changes will stick around when the game comes out in October. So the way I decided to structure this video is going to be in three parts. The first part will be all the new improvements that I know you guys are going to be super excited about. Part 2 is going to be more on the nerfs and the changes from Xenoverse 1. And then part 3 is going to be more around the theories of stuff that I noticed but not 100% confirmed yet. So without further ado, let's discuss everything we saw in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 yesterday. First things first, let's talk about Key Charge. Now Charging Key was one of the more controversial things in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 just due to the fact for the first time in Dragon Ball Z game history, you had to equip it to use it which was kind of weird. However, the biggest flaw with charging key in Xenoverse was due to the fact that it has a very slow startup time which leaves you wide open in online modes. Basically, anytime you try to charge key online, you pretty much get beat up and because of that, it was kind of useless to do and you were better off relying on drains and then punching to get key back. However, this time, the biggest thing I noticed with charging key this time around in Xenoverse 2 is due to the fact that the key charge startup time is much faster. You can actually kick your opponent back, knock him back, and then do a quick key charge and get back into pummeling your opponent. So that is a huge improvement to those who love charging key in battle. You can actually sort of rely on it this time in online modes. Speaking of hit detection, that has greatly improved in Xenoverse 2. Now granted, there's still the big catalyst of playing it online and wondering how it's going to go up against someone who has like a 2 or 3 bar connection. So I don't know how that's going to work. However, based off of playing the local version, I was able to see how much more fluid in the game was due to the fact that they changed how the hitboxes work as well as how uh, less invincibility frames were. The big problem with Xenoverse 1 was due to the fact that there was way too many invincibility frames and when you mix that with the combination of bad internet as well as the hit detection, it just wasn't a good mix. However, this time around they seem to have improved by making the hitboxes more precise and by reducing the amount of invincibility frames available in the game and basically what that means is you can get hit a lot more often. Again, the big problem with Xenoverse 1 was due to the fact that when you get knocked out or stop flying, you're somewhat invisible for a second to give you a chance to get up and this is what makes with the bad hit detection and cause issues. So this time around you can expect it to work a lot better online and again, until I actually play it, I can't confirm, but off of playing the local version yesterday, I just see and smell the improvement and that has me super excited for the game. Speaking of precise hitboxes, back hits have become very dangerous in Xenoverse 2. Now to those who don't know what a back hit is, you know when you find somebody and you snap vanish behind them and someone can quickly turn around and punch back? Yeah, that. It's a lot faster this time around and the best way to kind of block it from what I saw yesterday is to either do a perfect block or to try to basically do a sidestep, which is kind of much more difficult to do. So you can't just kind of drift away anymore just because, again, the hitbox is a lot better and you, you can't use that to your advantage anymore. So again, if you want to snap vanish behind somebody, expect to get punched or perfect block it or try to sidestep and that's the best way to get out of the attack. So it's definitely going to change the whole game around when you get online. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the two new features that were added in Xenoverse 2 and this includes the stamina break as well as the burst dash. Now the burst dash works two ways. If you press square X on a PS4, it allows you to kind of go after your opponent so to those who try to run away, you zone in and you punch them. However, if you double tap it, you can actually do the whole fly around thing that we saw in the Rage of Blast series. It kind of like completely stopped them from running. So you can do two forms of burst dash and it's beautiful. Now I will warn you though. Burst Dash does take a whole stamina bar, so if you use it while you're out of stamina, it's going to break your stamina and then you'll be left kind of defenseless in the field, so don't overuse it. However, at the same time, if you see that opponent keeps running around, you can definitely stop them from doing it, and I love that the most in Xenoverse 2, because oh my gosh, the runners in Xenoverse 1 are probably the most unknown kind of players in the entire game. The other new feature known as Stamina Break is going to be quite the game changer just because, well, it breaks your opponent's stamina and allows you to pull off some insane combos. So the way it works is now if you press forward square or forward triangle, you deliver a really hard hitting attack to your opponent and you break the stamina. However, there's a big difference in breaking the stamina this way as opposed to the old way and that's the fact that it lasts half the time. If my stamina is low when I block and you break my stamina, I'm kind of screwed for roughly about 10 seconds and if you're punching me and doing combos, that lasts roughly around 10, 11, 12, 13 seconds. 
If you do a stamina break straight up, what it does is it breaks the stamina for roughly five seconds, and you can extend that if you do combos into like six, seven seconds. So basically, stamina break now works half the time. So there's still a reason why you want to break your opponent's stamina as opposed to using this. And also note, you can actually block it. You can block, you know, those hard hits in Xenos 1 and 2. However, if you do a stamina break and someone blocks it, nothing happens. So there is balance to the attack and it can be completely abused, but at the same time, it could be a really powerful way to get combos in. On top of that, if you do a stamina break followed by a super attack or an ultimate attack, yeah, yikes. <laughs> I mean, I pulled off a supernova with Kula a lot of times where I broke my opponent's stamina and then I threw the ball at them and it almost always connected. So. I guess it just just get out there and learn. Get out there and learn and see what, what works best. And to those who are afraid of it, just learn the best ways to stop it. And again, uh, if you block it, it does not break your stamina and you're fine. So those are all the major improvements that I noticed off of playing the game yesterday. And again, this is all from the alpha build. For all I know, there's going to be more features added later and everything's going to be changed when the final game comes out in October. So just take this with a grain of salt for now. The next thing I want to talk about is the nerfs. And this is going to make a lot of fans super happy because, well, a lot of annoying attacks and moves from Xenos 1 will no longer be annoying. Let's talk about the most infamous move yet, and of course that is the Angry Shout. So everybody uses Angry Shout, I mean I am an avid Angry Shout user. And the reason why Angry Shout was so dangerous in Xenos 1 was because you can kind of stagger an opponent and go into a combo, go into a drain, go into whatever. But Angry Shout now it works the same way where if you use it you can push your opponent back and get key. However if you use Angry Shout it super pushes your opponent away so you can't actually connect it with any moves anymore. So to those who are using Angry Shout to combo with the moves, sorry you can't do it anymore. As you can see on the screen, every time I used Angry Shot against my friends, they were always pushed too far back and I could never really connect it. On top of that, if I try to do any super moves, it gives them enough time to escape as well. So you can no longer combo Angry Shot into any moves. Speaking about getting away, After Image is now officially nerfed and I assume this is going to include Phantom Fist as well. If you guys remember, Phantom Fist and After Image were moves that took no key and basically allowed you to get out of any attack. Well, guess what folks? After Image and Phantom Fist now officially take key. Well, I saw After Image and I assume Phantom Fist works the exact same way. But now it takes key to do. And I'm not talking about just pulling it off. I'm talking about if you sit there in the middle of the field and press uh, After Image, it takes your key bar away. So you can no longer spam After Image and I assume any other move that didn't use key before will now use key as well. So that's a really, really good good improvement because I can't tell you how annoying moves like After Image and Phantom Fist were in the game. And I'm sure a lot of you guys still have nightmares over Phantom Fist. Speaking of nightmares, the freeze ray is completely different this time. You guys remember the freeze ray since Xenos 1 was the only race that had a unique key blast that uh, worked very different from the other ones. And what it used to do is it would kind of track you. If it hits you, it freezes you for a couple seconds. Well, this time around, the way it works is number one, you have to hold the button down so you can't just kind of sit there and spam it anymore. And two, it only goes straight. On top of that, if it does connect, if it does connect, it freezes you for literally like half a second or so. So it does not give you a free ray to figure out what you want to do. If you're going to use the freeze ray this time around, you better figure out how to connect it with moves, otherwise it's basically going to be useless, and you probably should pick a different key attack for your custom character. Now we'll point out that every time Cooler used this freeze ray, it did add poison damage to the character, but I'm pretty sure that was the Super Soul. To those who don't know what Super Soul is, Super Soul is a new name for Z-Soul, and every time I use Cooler's attack and pull off a freeze ray, I start kicking and then I start poison damage appear in my opponent's uh, name. So again, I don't know if this is because this is actually a freeze ray functionality or if it is because of Cooler Super Soul. So until that is confirmed later, I guess kind of keep this one up in the air for now. The next nerf is grabbing on the ground. Now if you guys remember the initial gameplay that I posted a couple weeks ago featured being able to pick your opponents up when they're on the ground. Well, you can no longer do that. Now again, I don't know if this is going to be in the final version of the game or if they nerfed it or what the deal is, but I was not able to pick up my friends at all every time I knocked them on the ground, which is kind of a good sign because that was a dangerous addition to the game. In Xenos uh, 2, when I played a couple weeks ago, every time I knocked my opponent down, I was able to also do some combos with it on the ground, and then finish him off with a grab, which was kind of powerful. But this time around, it seems like they fixed that, and again, I don't know if that's going to be final or not, but I noticed that in the new build. Now, the next nerf that I want to cover is counterattacks, such as Godbreaker and Burst Rush. Now, yesterday, I only got a chance to use Godbreaker, so I don't know how the other ones are going to work, but I almost never pulled Godbreaker off, which is both good and bad. If you guys remember, Godbreaker in Xenos 1 was pretty annoying and allowed you to counter pretty much 100% of the time. And this time around, we couldn't pull off Godbreaker once. So I don't know if we were doing it wrong or if they changed the timing completely or what the deal is, but Godbreaker was pretty much unusable in this build. But again, remember, this is still an alpha build and I don't know how much is going to change prior to the release of the game. For all we know, it was broken itself, it was buggy, and it'll work better when the game comes out. But for now, Godbreaker and counterattacks seem to be getting some kind of nerf and that's actually pretty good news. Now this next nerf is a major change in the game and it's going to be a huge factor in how you create your character. Certain ultimate attacks now take 5 key bars to pull off. And from what I saw yesterday, attacks like Supernova and Dragon Fist require 5 key bars. 
Now I will point out that when I played the game initially a couple weeks ago, an attack like Dragon Twist with Goku took three key bars. But now in this build, it takes five, and the big difference is it does a lot more damage than the three key bar based attacks. Now as of right now, I don't know what attacks are going to change or what's going to require more key prior to the game coming out. However, I will point out that I do like the new system because now ultimate attacks feel a lot more unique. But for all we know, they might not even keep the system because, again, this is still an alpha build and there's going to be major changes made prior to the game coming out. So what do you guys think about the whole 5 key bar system? Like it or do you not like it? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Speaking of ultimate attacks, I noticed that they are harder to pull off now because you don't have super armor anymore. If you guys remember, let's say I'm doing a spirit bomb in Xenoverse 1, I fly up, start charging it. If you punch me, nothing happens. To stop it, you have to guard break me. However, what I noticed this time around, if you're doing an ultimate attack, you can be knocked out of it with something as simple as a key blast. Now, this is actually kind of confusing to me because there are certain times where I did an ultimate attack where I, I kind of had super armor, and then there are other times when I didn't. So I don't know if this is based on certain moves or if you have enough stamina, you can basically have that protection or how it works yet. But it, it does seem it's going to be easier to stop someone from doing an ultimate attack, and you no longer have to rely on guard breaking every time someone tries to spam Super Kamehameha or the Spirit Bomb. But again, I don't know how the final version of this is going to work, and for all we know, it's going to work exactly the same as it does in Xenoverse 1. So for this one, we kind of have to st stick around and see what happens as the final game comes out in October. And the final major change I noticed is perfect blocking now is a lot slower. If you guys remember in Xenoverse 1, you can just kind of button mash guard until you pull off perfect blocks. It made it a lot easier to do. But this time, it's kind of a startup time to perfect blocking and guarding, and if you do it wrong, you will get hit. So to those who master perfect blocking, guess what? You'll have to do it once again when Xenoverse 2 comes out in October. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the new improvements as well as nerfs. Are you excited, not excited? Are you worried about anything? Feel free to share anything down below. Now for the last part of this video, I want to kind of talk about some theories and speculations based off of the observations I made with the build that I played yesterday. The first thing I want to talk about is the character based super souls that change your playstyle around completely. In this case, Goku in the build yesterday, when you go Super Saiyan, if you do a regular Kamehameha, you're actually able to warp now too. So it seems that Xenoverse 2 is going to incorporate a lot of these super souls that are based on character moves that enhance your character completely. Now Z souls and Xenoverse 1 were pretty much busted, overpowered, and broken, and they were kind of annoying. So I'm hoping that a lot of the Z souls or super souls that they add in Xenoverse 2 are like this, where if you use them the right way, they can make it more interesting and unique in terms of how you play. I mean, another one I pointed out was Cooler, if he freezes somebody, he adds poison damage with his super soul, which I assume that's what it was. So I want to see a lot more of that, and that would be a lot better than the broken crap that we got in Xenoverse 1. Speaking of Z-Souls, I saw a bunch of people ask me questions of how they're going to be nerfed and how they're going to change in Xenoverse 2, and honestly, I don't know the answer to that yet. In fact, even attacks like Kaioken and Super Moves and Ultimate Moves, I don't know how anything is going to change quite yet. But I do know that certain moves like After Image and Angry Shadow being nerfed, I assume since they kind of focus on fixing everything from the last game, that a lot of issues from Xenoverse 1 are not going to be present in Xenoverse 2. But again, that's a complete guess, and until I actually play it myself, I can't really confirm anything yet. However, it's a step in the right direction, and hopefully the Dim's team and Bandai will address all the problems from Xenoverse 1 prior to releasing the game in October. Now the last thing I want to talk about is, and this is again complete speculation theory guess, I don't know how the final version is going to work with this. I noticed for Cooler's character in the build yesterday, it just said Cooler 4th form. Now, if it says that, that pretty much confirms that it will not let him transform in the game. Otherwise, it wouldn't say fourth form, because unless it changes, I mean, it could do that. But from seeing how Xenos 1 did it, I feel like they can do the exact same thing. And characters like First Form Frieza can transform. This means Cell probably can transform. And this means Cooler can transform. But again, it's a complete guess. And for all we know, this could change prior to the release of the game in October. So fingers crossed there. Because I mean, I know a lot of us, myself included, want to play as these characters and transform in the middle of battle because transformations are always so special. So until they actually confirm how that actually works, just it's up in the air and I do want to kind of point it out based on my observation yesterday when I played the game. So that's pretty much everything. Let me know your thoughts and everything I covered. There's a lot that I talked about and there's probably still a lot that I missed. I do know that Sea Reacts and Afro Sandra are going to do their own breakdowns as well, so make sure you go to their channels as well and just kind of wait for them to upload their videos. But hey, from what I played yesterday, it's a step in the right direction. I'm excited and I cannot wait to see what else the Dim's team and Bana have in store for us as we get closer and closer to October and the release of Dragon Ball Z 2. So of course, if you're hype, make sure you leave a like right below and let me know your thoughts on everything I discussed, any questions you might have in the comment section below. As always, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Rhymesong, and I will see all your awesome super sandwiches in the comment section below. Peace.